the deal's going to go speaking. through for the, the Tassi. He's in. Tassi, yeah. Talk to me. Because you know you, you needed mm. someone with Fafana out. Uh, how happy are you with that deal? It, it came out of nowhere, to be honest. It, it came out of nowhere. Um, I've never watched him, in all honesty. Only thing that I've seen is um, obviously clips of him. I've read up on him, done a little bit of research. And when I heard his name, I saw United were linked to him not long ago. I think a few weeks ago, you guys were linked, like closely linked to him. So I didn't really pay much attention. But from what I've seen, you know, I'm seeing this narrative going around that he's really slow. Um, you know, he, he struggles to get around the pitch. Let me talk about his positives first from what I've seen from just the clips. Um, he looks pretty comfortable in the ball. Um, in terms of his passing stats as well, he looks like he's, he's able to play, you know, play really play the ball really well from the back. Um, that's basically what we're looking to do now in terms of our build-up. We need players, especially our defenders, to be really comfortable in the ball. You know, if you look at Colwell, if you look at Badia Shill, um, obviously now De De Sarsi as well. Um, and he's played with Badia Shill before at Monaco. So that's definitely a skill that we can use in terms of that attribute and, you know, being comfortable in possession and actually playing it from, from the back as well. And from my understanding, I believe he can play right back as well. Um, I don't know if you guys have, have watched him, um, but from what I've seen, he, he looks like he can play it right back. Obviously, we've got Gusto there, but the, the fact that he's quite versatile and he's able to read the game in different positions is only a you know only a positive. Um, so that looks really good. Um, and yeah, just in terms of his physicality, he looks like he's you know he, he's not someone that you're able to just get off the ball really tall as well. I believe he's six foot three. Um, our, our team's lacking a lot of height to be honest. Apart from Badia Shill, even Kepa's quite short. Do you know what I mean? Our keeper's six. Our keeper's six foot. So I think it's good in that aspect that we've actually got a little bit of height in our team now. Um, and yeah, we just have to kind of see how he gets on, really. I know he doesn't look the quickest, but again, you know, Thiago Silva isn't the quickest and, and look how he gets on. Do you know what I mean? If you're able to read the game and you're you're quite intelligent, you find yourself in, in good positions on the pitch, you don't need that much pace. Obviously, I, I did, I would like a quicker, quicker centre-back, but I have to look at his other attributes and what we're looking at. So for me, I, I trust our scouting team because everyone that we brought in as of January has been, been really good. So... I just have to see how he gets on um, at, at Chelsea. I can't say, oh, this guy looks rubbed. You know what I mean? looks like a, they're calling him the French Maguire um, from, from what I've seen online. So I can only judge him from what I see at my club. But in terms of the, the strong attributes that I see from him, it's definitely something that we can utilise in the system going forward. I think it'll be really key in terms of how we build up going forward. And physically as well, he doesn't look like someone that you can just shift off the ball, in all honesty. So, yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on him, in, in all honesty, from what I've seen. Don, if he needed Chelsea someone with get... that age, guys. Go ahead, Sorry, no, go ahead, no, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say to, to Don, if uh, if mm. Chelsea don't get Caicedo, um, what what's your midfield looking like? Your first sort of first choice midfield looking like, and are you sort of worried or concerned about sort of like the lack of depth in the midfield and the, and the lack of strong yeah. enough starting eleven? If that is the case going into next season. Yeah, I think the secondary option for us was Lavia. But again, I think that's going to get done now. Liverpool, I think they're going to wrap that up. Um, the only other option really is Paulinho. But again, the age it isn't what we're going to be looking at right now. He's 28. Do you know what I mean? And like I said, Casado's only 21. He can be at Chelsea a lot longer. So I know there's there's not really that many alternatives right now that I would that would be happy with um, apart from Casado. The only alternative really that I would be happy with is too many. But again, you're coming out of a difficult deal to go into another difficult deal. So that doesn't make any sense. So how I look at it right now, I'm not even trying to think of alternatives because the market is so thin and we've, we've wasted so much time with Casado now. We have we have to get it done. Um, but away from him, we've got Santos, who's played really well. I think we're going to keep him, to be honest. He can be a bit of an, you know, an understudy to uh, to Casado. Um, you know, we, we're looking at Kudus. If he comes in, he's another one that, we, that can play in midfield. We're most likely going to keep Carney. So he's an attacking midfielder who can play there as well. Um, we've got a few options, in all honesty. Gallagher, I'm not sure what's happening with him. I hope we get rid. To be honest, he's not good enough. Um, but yeah, in midfield, it, at the moment, we are quite thin. But by the end of the window, we could bring in potentially two more midfielders. So we just have to see how we get on. I think this is a big week for Casado. I've been saying this for, for months now. But again, you know, it, it has to be a big week. It has to be a big week because it's, it's, it's way overdue. We need to get that one done. So yeah, by the end of the window, we could potentially have another two midfielders. But as it is, yeah, it is a bit it is a bit thin. Because I think Cassidy will get loaned out, in all honesty. I want Carney to stay. He, he does look a little bit more refined than um, Cassidy. Um, Carney was was really good yesterday. Um, and he's been quite good this preseason. So I hope he stays. Um, and yeah, bring in hopefully another two another two midfielders. That'll be good. Do you think Cassidy is coming, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm confident he's coming. I'm confident he's coming. We spent... We spent a lot of time chasing chasing this guy. I'm quite confident. I was confident with Colwell signing and look what's happening. Do you know what I'm saying? So I am quite confident that Casado's gonna come. How I don't much think he'll be in the end. I, I still think he'll be less than 100. Um, I still think he will be about 85 million. 
was having a conversation in the group chat about obviously we're looking at Sanchez and I'm I'm underwhelmed by that signing to be honest with you because he's not an upgrade on Kepa. Um, he's not someone that I even looked at as an option. Um, but as it stands, we're not looking to you know to cash out on like a Manion, for example. Um, so as it stands right now, hopefully it'll be a, a little bit of a sweetener because Brighton, from our understanding, they want to get rid of Sanchez. So as much as we've been going back and forth because the whole Colwell situation and they're not happy with with how things have panned out with that, you know, hopefully this will be a little bit of a sweetener. You know, take someone that you don't want, we'll take him. You know, lower the money for Casado. I, I just allow it, man. Just just give it, give him, give us the player now. Do you know what I mean? That's what that's what I'm hoping for. But Sanchez, I'm underwhelmed. I'm underwhelmed, man. But yeah, with Casado, yeah, I, I'm still quite confident that we'll get it for less than 100. I was saying this even before we we came in for Sanchez, but now I'm a little bit more confident. I think. You know, naturally, these are businessmen. So they are going to hopefully use that to their advantage. Say, listen, we'll take him off of you, but let's just work on Casado. Let's let's see if we can bring it down a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? I know they're tough negotiators, but you have to try. You you, you don't you don't get if you don't ask. Do you know what I'm saying? So we have to see how we get on with that. Rory, what's your take on with Chelsea? You know, big money spent last year. By the end of this window, they're going to be somewhere near that that two fifty, the three hundred like million spent again. Do you think they're ready for the season? Do you think that the players and Poch and the fans can handle the pressure of spending that and, and getting straight back into sort of Champions League contention and winning trophies? Um, I, I mean, I don't think they're going to be in Champions League contention this season. I think that there's going to be a reliance on young players next season, even though they've spent so much money. There's going to be a reliance on young, fairly unproven players. And I'd worry for them that if the season goes as badly as last season, that that's a lot of pressure and a lot of backlash will be on those kids. Um, but I feel like there are certain players that stand out for me. I was watching them uh, last night, that Lewis Hall, I thought looked sensational. Um, and so I do think they're going to have a good season. I think they'll be, t they'll be top half at least, um, but I don't think they'll push Champions League. And then the worry for them is, I mean, I don't want to talk about FFP again, because when I talk about FFP, Chelsea fans rip me apart. But I do worry if they spend again this summer, I know they've just sold a load of players, but like if their squad isn't in a place where it can compete for the top four, and they have to go out and spend another three or four hundred million on top. I, I just don't know if they're going to be able to do it or if FFP is a myth. But yeah, that would be the worry is how much more money I still think needs to be spent for them to compete with Arsenal, City, Roy, what, and United. What makes you what makes you think that top four isn't realistic if we get the signings that we need to? Um, I don't. Th so I don't buy into the idea that uh, not being in Europe is massively helpful. I think when Arsenal were not in Europe, it didn't massively help us, and when we were in the Europa League last season it didn't massively hinder us. So I don't think that's a big advantage. And just looking at the teams on paper, um, I don't like Chelsea haven't really improved their squad on last season massively. I don't think yet. Caicedo would do that, but I, I just look at the squads and for me, it just doesn't compete with the teams in the top four. I don't think it competes with the teams in the top six. I think seventh or eighth is probably where Chelsea. Ended. Wow. <laughs> really? So if yeah. we bring in a Casado, we bring in a Kudus, you don't think we, we'll, we'll even get top eight? I think if you bring in Casado and Kudus, I think you've got a better chance. But I don't think you're going to... I don't I don't know if you'll bring in both of them. Right now, the way your squad is, mm. seventh or eighth. Uh, yeah. So Rory, Listen, you, I, I, I see you like... You, so you don't rate some of the Chelsea players, the Enzos, like you don't rate the Jacksons, then Kunkus, Colwell that played for Brighton, Reese James coming back, Shilwell. It's, no? not that I don't, it's not that I don't rate them, not at all. It's just that I, I rate, I massively rate the squads currently that City, Arsenal, Liverpool and United have. All mm. of them have been playing together for, or the majority of them have been playing together for at least a season. So this is the big thing, I think. And, and this is where almost not playing in Europe actually hinders Chelsea because you've got all of these new players. You want them playing together as much as possible. And actually having some of those European games in midweek would help because you've got to go a week at a time. Yeah, you can play in training, but you just need match sharpness together. So I think there are good individuals. Uh, we need to see how well they play together. I still think there are some big weaknesses in the team, uh, especially across the defence. I don't know if this De Sassi guy is going to be good. Um, who knows how Thiago Silva is going to fare this season. Uh, he's another year older. So, uh, you know, yeah, I think yeah. I think in two two years... I think it's, you know, players like Cassidy, Lewis Hall, there's a lot of young, Santos, there's a lot of young talent in that team. I think in two years, they could really come through. But I think next season will just be a bit too soon for them. I, I hear what you're saying, bro. But in the context of, of Chelsea right now, I think this is a season for us. We, we, 
we we basically took a bit of a hard reset. Do you know what I mean? I know what you're saying about um, European football, because I was saying the same thing about City. I said, it, City love to be in all these competitions because it keeps that momentum going. But in the context of Chelsea right now, we've got a bunch of new players. Again, you need to build that chemistry. Of course, ideally, I would like them to be playing more matches. But as it stands right now, Poch is going to have a lot more time with them on the training ground. Do you know what I'm saying? He's going to have a lot more time with them to get fit. And already our players look a lot fitter. And Poch is all about high intensity, fitness. So for me this season, I do think that is quite beneficial that we're going to be out of Europe. Ideally, like I said, I would have loved to get into Europe. But in, in the context of the hard reset and where we're, where, we're, where we're at right now, I need everyone to be well drilled and understand exactly how we're going to play. So we need to train, keep training and keep training and keep training. One game a week, again, you know, the current squad, because we've, we've got rid of a lot of players. Um, I think it will help us. I don't think you'll see a lot of chopping and changing with our starting 11. I think we'll go with the same 11 pretty much every week, maybe a few tweaks here and there. But I think as long as we plug those holes, we bring in a Casado. I don't want Sanchez. You know, the only thing that that's kind of, you know, when I look at the season, I always think, oh, I've, got, I've still got Kepa. Do you know what I mean? Now we, oh, we've got Sanchez in goal. That's the only thing. But honestly, I think if we get a Casado, we bring in a Kudus, I think we've got enough, enough there to, to at least get top four. Do you know what I mean? We can't use pre-season as everything, but I'm seeing really good indications of what's to come. Do you know what I'm saying? Last season, if you looked at our squad on paper, a lot of people were saying, like, how, how are Chelsea in this position? Because on, on paper, again, you've got good players, but it just wasn't it wasn't it wasn't being showed on the pitch. But now it's actually being showed on the pitch in preseason, like I said. So it's a good indication of what's to come going forward. Poch looks really, you know, look, looks really serious. He looks really switched on. A lot of the players look really hungry. So I don't see why we can't get top four as long as we plug the further holes that we need. I think people are overlooking us a little bit because we finished half last season, but that was a completely different team. That team's been flipped. Do you know what I mean, even me as a Chelsea fan. There's, there's a lot of unknown right now. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of unknown right now. But what I do know is that there's going to be a lot of good players. And I've seen a lot of good individual performances in preseason and a lot of fitness as well. So it's looking good. It's looking good.